Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, so the next project up is going to be a massive corner desk uh, for my, my office space. I did a, a video where I did a floating shelf some time ago. I'll leave a link to that in the show notes so you can kind of see what the current setup is. And then I'll put a picture up here on the screen somewhere of my basic SketchUp design of what this new desk is going to look like. Uh, the front is all supported by a file cabinet on one side and traditional drawers on the other side. And then they've got a little like riser block or pedestal, if you will, on the top that'll give the illusion that the top is floating. Um, I'm shooting for six quarter thickness in the top, but we got to start on the two cabinets underneath. Um, I have another picture here I'll put up on the screen. Again, this is just to keep me on track and the final plans will look much more in depth uh, than what I have here. Um, so I'm going to get going on these two cabinets that go underneath and then I'll lay it all out on the floor here and decide exactly how that top shape because the top shape is, is kind of unusual, but we'll get to that. I want to try to keep this as short as I can, uh, but this is a rather large build. I've already pre-milled uh, the legs for both cabinets as well as all the rails. Um, they're still a little oversized and get, get one more pass through the equipment. Uh, joinery will probably be domino. Um, so that's what I'm going to do next is, is start cutting these things to final size so that we can start uh, laying out the joinery. I'm not going to put the milling stuff on camera. You guys have seen that enough. So, uh, yeah, let's get going on some domino joinery and get a couple of carcasses so we can start laying out for the panels. So we got all the templates cut for the curves, so I'll go through and, and mark all these out. But we have to cut all of these grooves before we physically cut those curves. Additionally, I've been given some thought to the top because this is going to have a, a drop-in panel of, of half-inch plywood. And I've marked where I need to notch the legs uh, for that panel to sit down in there and sit flush. Um, but there could be, there will be a lot of weight on this, so I wanted to do some bracing. Um, and believe it or not, I think I'm going to go to pocket screws and do it from the inside after everything is constructed um, just to help support that top of that desk. So next up, I'm going to get all these uh, curves marked out. Then I'm going to take it apart and start marking for the grooves and, and get our grooves cut in all these parts for the panels. So that's next. So next up, it's time to cut all of these rail parts, and I have them dummy proof for me and marked where all of the cuts actually go. I have a half inch dado stack set up in the saw, and I've run a, a test to make sure that the fit is good, and I'm happy with that fit. 
So now we're just going to cut all of these parts. Um, there's a few in here that are going to need a deeper groove because of the curves that are in here. And I have those marked, again, to dummy proof it for me with a piece of blue tape. Um, so I'll come back and raise the blade and make a second pass in those parts once all these parts are run on this pass. Now that all the curves and grooves are cut in the rails, I went ahead and sanded those up to about 120 last night, just a, a basic sanding. And today I'm marking out and going to do the grooves in the legs to accept the rest of the panel. Um, but at this point I can go ahead and get a measurement for that panel. Um, and I just use the two stick method, put it in the groove, slide it apart, tape it together take it back out and measure your stick to give you the height. Um, and then I'll be careful to set my depth on the router for these legs. Um, I'm gonna use a quarter of an inch, but I could certainly go more if I needed to. Um, but if I do that, then I only have to add a half inch to that measurement. So next up, let me get this all pulled apart and we'll go ahead and do the legs uh, over at the, probably over at the outfeed table. So pretty much my normal setup, uh, I'm running dual edge guides because I like the stability I get out of it. I have a half inch spiral bit and the dust collection is on. I've gone ahead and just already marked my start and my stop holes um, because one of the downsides to this particular router is the visibility is just not great through the dust collection, but the dust collection is good. So by having the start and stop hole, um, I can feel when the router gets to those and that's where I'll start and stop. Confession time, uh, I made an error. Um, I got a little distracted, not that that's any excuse. And I missed my pencil note on this leg that this was a front face leg. It should not have got a groove. So I've cut a repair piece and I've got that glued in now and I'll clean it up. You're never gonna see it, only, well, you and I are gonna know about it. Um, but just to show you mistakes happen, label your parts well. All right, so the repair came out pretty good. I know that, that that light's pretty harsh. You can still tell that there's a repair in there, uh, but being on the inside of a case, I'm okay with it. Next thing I have to do to all the legs is that little notch, um, and I'll show you how I do that. So I have some rough marked lines on here, and I go ahead, and I have a router plane set at the exact final depth, so I just use that to mark and scribe a line on the face so I know exactly how deep the saw has to go because these are thick pencil lines. I should have used a marking knife and then I wouldn't have to do that. Then I just saw out the bulk. It's kind of like doing a half blind dovetail. Just like 
that. So the last thing construction-wise we have to do to these legs is taper the feet. Um, and I made a small little template that I'm going to use um, so that every leg is consistent from one to the next. Now I will cut these at the bandsaw and I'll clean them up on the disc sander. Now I have all of my legs set up in the orientation that they go in the table. Um, and after we did those notches, the biggest clue is those those four notches are going to take a piece of plywood, so those should all be lining up. So I've marked these top two. I can set them aside and go ahead and mark the bottom two. Then we can head over to the bandsaw. All right, so there they are. Uh, I didn't film the glue up. It was, it was just a, a long day of glue up. Um, the glue up consisted of gluing up all of the side panels first, and then coming back and gluing on uh, the back panels. I still have to clean up the notches in the corner. I've got just a, a couple little minor lips, um, but we'll clean those up and get ready for the plywood panels. Um, still lots of work to do. Um, but next up will be those plywood panels and the supports that have to go in the top. That'll be tomorrow or maybe even the next day, I'm not sure. Uh, for now, I'm just going to leave these sitting in the clamps and uh, call it a day. So the last thing I want to accomplish in this video is getting the tops and the bottoms in. And we'll do drawers and the desktop in the next video. Um, and I was a little concerned because this is going to be half inch plywood and it's got a little one inch riser block that goes on it and all the weight was going to be supported in the middle of that one inch plywood. Now I thought I would just put a couple of braces in and use some pocket screws and I thought well I, I think I can do a little better than that. So this one is just dry fit in uh, so you can see what it's going to look like and all I did was create strips all the way around the outside and the centers, this is a snug fit. The centers are half lapped uh, into those pieces. So now all I have to do is pull this apart and I'll glue in these strips first and then I can go ahead and build the rest of it together, getting it glued in, uh, clamped up and let it cure out. And then the uh, plywood, which I'll, I'll cut a right sized piece one, will sit in just like that in the top. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm not going to show you the bottoms. The bottoms are exactly the same way, except for I'm not going to use these two little braces. There's no weight on them uh, for starters, and I'm also using three-quarter inch Baltic birch in the bottom. So there's, there's really not a whole lot to see. That'll be a pretty simple pop-in. But these had a little bit more to them, so I wanted to show you that. So there it is, the bottoms are all in. Uh, they're just pen nailed in place. I didn't bother gluing them down. They're just here as kind of a dust cover. Um, so the, just the nails were sufficient. The tops are just glued in place. Uh, when the desk sits on here, the weight of those are gonna keep that down anyway. Um, so glue was more than sufficient. Um, when we get after the next video, it'll be drawers and the top itself. And then I might do one more video, it depends on how quickly the drawers go, um, but showing you what I did in the office and all the changes that are, that are in there. So uh, again, that's gonna wrap it up for this one, guys. And until next time, take care.